Welcome, everybody. Woo! We're back. Get Fundable Podcast. And in this episode, we're talking about like how cool debt is if you know what you're doing. We're also going to be talking about for folks who are checking out the podcast and don't know, right? Some people believe that debt is bad. Most people don't know that the certain kinds of debt is not just good, but spectacular. So when we come back, we're going to do a deep dive into good versus bad debt, right? The, the, the evils and foibles of debt and how to leverage debt in order to kill it in your entrepreneurial and uh, real estate investing uh, enterprises. We'll be back. In the constantly changing world of fundability, the big question is this, how are entrepreneurs and real estate investors like us, ones who want to grow our businesses and who are tired of paying for really expensive alternative lending, how do we tap into the most inexpensive money available and do it without the hassle of typical borrowing? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Welcome to the Get Fundable Podcast with your host, Merrill Chandler. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Merrill Chandler here in the Get Fundable Podcast. And you know what? One of the things that I get, that we get some pushback every once in a while from people who have come from other outfits, right? Other uh, belief systems, other uh, folks out there preaching their various uh, financial gospels. And every once in a while we get people coming, I hate debt. Debt is bad. Debt is evil. And then they make decisions about that debt and try to get out as of debt as fast as possible. And then months, years, Sometimes decades later, they come to me and say, I want to get into real estate investing. And they have not got any kind of financial records. No FICO scores, no lending software can evaluate them. And they're angry and frustrated because they got, they were misled about how debt actually works and, and that there is a difference between good debt and bad debt. So that's what we're talking about today. So, so let's, um, so instead of calling it good debt, why don't we first of all, call it strategic debt, right? Strategic debt. Strategic debt is debt that we can leverage. Now I would normally call it leverageable, but that's just a big ass word, right? <laughs> leverageable debt. Let's kind of break this down. There are folks out there, and bless his heart, Dave Ramsey is one of the big proponents of living debt-free, right? Buy everything with cash, put everything in savings, and don't, and, and live out uh, off the grid, live out of the financial system. Here's the challenge. First of all, um, to his credit, uh, Dave Ramsey began to preach this particular financial philosophy as a result of a, a, a crippling bankruptcy in his 20s. And because he had this untenable relationship with debt and got overwhelmed by debt and then had circumstances in his life, be able to not make those payments, he had to file bankruptcy. And he said, not me ever again. And I'm going to teach people that there's another way. Well, his ability to, to, to share this financial philosophy is a reaction to circumstances that was in his life that created an, a horrible circumstance of which bankruptcy was the, the, the only, the final solution. But is debt bad? And so as with everything that I do, I ask, what is your Z? What's the end game? What do you want out of your life? Because if you know yourself so well, and you know, I am going to be a W-2 employee for the rest of my life. I am never going to be an entrepreneur. I am never going to uh, take risks with money. I am never going to leverage my relationships and my financial reputation 
for for um for personal gain if you know yourself well enough to answer and be able to say that i am never 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 then living debt free is likely for you now remember never is a universal term you guys I, when i say never i'm not saying for the next 5 years i'm not saying for the next 10 years i'm saying never you are going to retire as a w2 uh, individual after 20, 30 years of uh, working for the company. And then you're going to take your savings, take your pension, and you're going to live off of that for the rest of your life using savings strategies and retirement strategies. But you're never going to try to leverage other people's money for, uh, for uh, as part of your end game. If you know yourself that well, then again, I say, Debt-free is likely for you. Living debt-free. Dave Ramsey may be the answer for you. Here's the problem. Let me, tell you, let me tell you a story. So I had a gentleman. The reason why I shared with you at the beginning that um, the nevers, right? All those nevers that I outlined. There's a gentleman, Dave. Dave comes to me after uh, he hears my presentation at a real estate investors conference. And uh, he comes up and he goes, I'm really excited. I would really like to be able to get, um, I'd like to get um, money for my business, right? And then use my business, those, those funds for my business and, and build a real estate investing career. I'm like, great. So let's take a look at your personal credit profile. And he goes, I don't have one. I'm like, fair, but if you don't have a personal credit profile, and again, most, most um, Daveites, Ramseyites, debt-freeites, whatever you want to call the, the, the collection of persons who don't believe in debt, there is a myth, and not even a myth, there is misinformation that you can get business credit without a personal profile. That has never been true, not even before my normal cutoff of 2008, right? But business lending changed at two, in 2008. But you still, they, you still needed a personal credit profile. So unless you were just getting Uline accounts and retail, uh, I mean, like retail cards and gas cards, which are not going to help you build a real estate investment business. Right. So, so the problem is, is this guy comes and he wants me to help him get business credit without a profile. And he goes, Oh no, I don't believe in debt. And I, I was quick to, to share with him that, but business debt is debt. And he's like, yeah, but I don't want it on my personal name. And I'm like, sir, I would, I, I would love to help you, but what you believe is true in this world is not the case. It's not actually true. You cannot get business lines of credit, business loans, even business credit cards just on your business. They have to pull your personal credit profile. And he goes, well, what if I don't have one? I said, because now at this point, uh, I'm only human. At this point, I was getting a little frustrated because he couldn't connect the dots. He wasn't doing the math, right? And I said, you're not going to get business credit. Never are you going to get the type of business credit you want. Business loans, lines of credit. Yes, you can get a Uline account just by working the, the Dun & Bradstreet Paydex score. Yes, you can get a Staples card for your business. That's not personally guaranteed. You're never going to get a business loan, line of credit, or even business, likely business credit card without personally guaranteeing those things. And the only reason why you're going to personally get, or the only way that you can personally guarantee it is if they pull your personal credit and go, wow, I love this borrower. I want to give them money too. So Dave, this that became a client and we helped him build from scratch, just like it I would an 18, a brand new 18 year old client. We took Dave and we built a 
fundable pro personal profile, which he then was able to leverage into the very things. That, but it took him several years. Now, why several years? Because remember how we talk about the 24 month look back period. Not a single account you have on your personal profile is meaningful until it hits 24 months old. Your credit cards don't count for anything. Yeah, they help build a score, but we aren't interested in score. We're interested in underwriting guidelines and hitting the underwriting bullseye, right? <laughs> a, a, a brand new credit card doesn't mean anything to FICO or underwriters until it's 24 months old. So to build a 24 month old profile, we need to take 24 months. And then we have to build the relationship with the lender. So if you are starting from nothing, if you're starting from scratch, this can be a timely process. But the thing we got to remember is that the fear of debt is because people are afraid they may not have longevity in their business or, or in their employment. If you are a, uh, and nothing on the hospitality industry, but if you're in the hospitality industry, servers, uh, host, host or hostesses, uh, working uh, for hotels, motels, et cetera, anybody in the hospitality industry, COVID hit it and gutted the whole thing, right? You might move from place to place. You love, I, we, we have some friends. He literally gets a waiting job up in Park City, skis all, uh, all, uh, all season, works his tail off as a waiter. Then he comes back down to Salt Lake City and waits tables down here. Again, nothing on the hospitality industry. But if you do not have the capacity to create a financial reputation with lenders and you can lose that job quickly or shift that job. We don't show consistency. And so our, and so we begin to jeopardize our relationship because uh, with banks and future funding, because nobody knows they can't count on, on, on whether or not we're going to be employed tomorrow or the next month or the next year. Follow me. So we're afraid. So some of us don't like debt because we don't know if we're going to be employed in the particular industry. We had clients who came in um, where um, when the, the gas, uh, when the gas prices, oil prices were such that it allowed for, um, for fracking up in, in South Dakota, we had hordes of Utahns go up into Eastern Utah and the Dakotas and get, get on these crews, right? They were making money hand over fist, but it wasn't, consistent such that they knew that they would employ be employed three months or six months later right it was almost like gig the the gig economy they were doing a gig at these oil sites so if you don't if so many of us don't like debt because we don't trust where next month's paycheck is coming from then you're likely not going to be interested in fundability or what fundability can do for you. Now, there are, of course, a number of people who say, I hate what I'm doing. I want to get consistent. I want to build a, a, a funding framework, right? And build my fundability. And so you, so you start thinking it, it with a different mentality. And that's who, that's who I serve, you guys. You are my tribe. Those of you, you could hate debt for 30 years, but the second you want to build a personal profile and build business credit, then I'm all yours. I will serve you till, uh, the, till my dying day because, but you got to understand that we're borrowing other people's money and that other people's money, the cheapest money out there is bank money and banks use underwriting systems, especially automatic underwriting systems. And so we got to hit those markers. See the dominoes falling here. Every one of those dominoes fall. And so that means we have to build a robust and powerful fundable personal profile and then leverage that over on the business. So cutting, just cutting to the quick, there's no such thing as let me call it functional, functional business credit without 
your, a personal profile and without you being the personal guarantor. It doesn't exist. And it hasn't for uh, since 2008. So now what? Now we talk about, now we talk about leverageable debt or strategic debt. So people look at me uh, when they, when they, before they get into the boot camp, right? Before they understand uh, the, the, the details of it. And I totally understand this is a huge topic. So people are like mystified. And but since most of us still believe old false beliefs about credit and about business funding, then we, we, cut, we, we have to kind of break those chains, right? We got to cut through the, the old beliefs and before we can start embracing the new beliefs. So when I say we want strategic debt so that we can leverage that into, into making our uh, real estate investing, entrepreneurial um, uh, uh, endeavors prosper, I say that there is very little debt we actually have to carry to look spectacular. So think of it this way. Ultimately, as we've, as you've learned, if you've been binging any of these for any amount of time, we know that we love a mortgage. Doesn't matter the amount. We love a mortgage on, on our credit profile. We love an auto loan on our credit profile. And we want at least three high value credit cards right? Go to the bootcamp. If you need any definitions about how to get those, et cetera, right? Get fundablebootcamp.com. But if you are looking, so those three credit cards, we want to charge 10, 20% traffic and pay to zero. So we're not carrying debt. Are you following me? We're not carrying debt. And ultimately we want those credit cards. We want the sum of the credit cards to be at least 20 grand because that's the minimum business line of credit that we want on the business side. Now, if we want a 30 or a 50 or a hundred on the business side, then we want to grow our personal debt capacity. But guys, I'm saying debt capacity, not debt load. It's not like you're going to charge up all three credit cards. Let's say you have 30 grand in credit cards, three tens. You're not charging them all up. That's not what fundability is. We don't want that debt. We want strategic debt. We want one mortgage, one auto loan, and at least three high value credit cards, right? And those high value credit cards we put traffic on them every single month. We don't carry balances. That's bad debt. Personal revolving accounts are bad debt. That falls into run away, run away. Warning, Will Robinson. Warning, Will Robinson, says the robot on, on, uh, on uh, Lost in Space, right? We don't, we want traffic on those credit cards, meaning charge ups and pay downs, but we want near zero or zero balances at the end of the month on the due date. So see how, so the only debt I'm talking about are your home and your car. And there, there are even ways to play that game so that you are, that you have the lowest possible debt load. But here's the thing using Dave's, uh, uh, it's funny that it's the case of two Dave's. We were talking about Dave Ramsey and then um, Dave David, the, the gentleman who came to me who wanted to get into real estate investing in the story I was telling at the beginning. So David comes to me and he, he is, when we set up his profile, when, when he becomes a successful borrower, he's like, I, I had no clue that this is what makes you fundable. I don't have a lot of debt. I have traffic on credit cards and a house and a car, but now I'm getting business lines of credit and business loans and business credit cards that don't report to my personal. So as a result, I'm going to be able to get all of this leverageable business credit and not put it on my personal profile. We're not going to kill the goose that lays the golden egg, you guys. We want to nurture that goose and make it healthy, happy, and, and terrific. So consumer debt, retail credit cards are there. And remember, I'm telling you what kind of the perfect profile looks like, but for those of us who don't have that perfect profile, there are ways to make it perfect. 
But this is what I mean by strategic debt instruments. Uh, Maybe that's a better way to say it now that it comes to me is we believe in strategic debt instruments, not in consumer debt. That's not what we're talking about. So now the, the, the last thing is that we only want credit instruments that are on our personal profile that are going to serve us over the long term to build business credit, et cetera. Uh, another thing is a, a wonderful debt instrument that is insanely strategic are HELOCs, home equity lines of credit. So much so that I tell, I tell clients that if you can find a HELOC as your first mortgage, don't get a mortgage loan, get a mortgage HELOC. Because every time, let's say you get your home is worth 150,000. You let's say you have a, a you could get a loan for a hundred grand, or you could get a home equity line of credit for a hundred grand. It's a little more expensive, but if you're trying to leverage your that money, that the, that those borrowed funds to for investments or for hard money loans, private loans, uh, buying inventory. That home equity line of credit, every time you make a payment, you're giving yourself more of a credit line to use for growing your real estate or entrepreneurial enterprises. I am the biggest fan of home equity lines of credit, so much so that I prefer them in first position rather than having a loan and putting a smaller HELOC in second position. I love first position HELOCs. And then one client who was really, really conservative, what was, was a great real estate investor, um, but was really, really conservative financially, almost Dave Ramsey in, in nature, but he, but he, he learned and he embraced this, this whole idea of having debt uh, or, or leverageable debt. And then when I, when I taught him the principle of HELOCs in first position, he's like, dude, do you know what this means? When I pay off a loan, I'm literally paying off and then I have all this equity and no access. I just, it looks good on my personal balance sheet, but I have no access to it. But Meryl, you're telling me to put a HELOC in the first position so that when I pay it down as fast as I can, I still have a HELOC reporting a a, a real estate loan reporting on my personal profile. And he goes, I got 10 properties. And I'm like, get 10 HELOCs. He thought I was a genius and, you know, um, no evidence to the contrary. Just kidding. He thought I was a genius because he's like, Meryl, I have 200,000 here, 400,000 here, 50,000 here. I have like over $1.2 million available to me if I used HELOCs as as my mortgage instrument. And I'm like, yeah, you do. And you can write a check and do a deal like a mad person. So that's what I call strategic debt. People, uh, um, Ramsey and others say, yeah, pay off your mortgage as fast as possible. And I'm saying, pay off your mortgage as fast as possible if your mortgage is a HELOC so that every dollar that you pay down gives you more resources to use to build your empires. So in that, he and I are aligned. I'm saying pick the right instrument and you will be the genius because now you got write a check, do a deal. And this isn't even including the business lines of credit that you can get through the fundability process, right? That funding formula. So that's what we're talking about. Now, the final thing that I would like to, to say, and this comes up in my boot camps um, all the time. So I just want to fast forward to the answer here. People are like, people have been led to believe that interest is bad. Now, interest is bad if you live your life and you run your business from a PL standpoint instead of a balance sheet. Now, what do I mean by that? So PL is income expenses, income and expenses. And that's how you determine your profits, right? Pretty simple. Your balance sheet is assets and liabilities, assets and liabilities, but this determines your net worth. So if you had $10 million in gold bullion, would you likely pay 
some expense category, uh, a, a safety deposit box, a, a, a security system, a private vault, private banking vault rent space there. Would you pay money to protect that asset? Yes, you would. All of us would. So you're, what you're telling me there is if I have this asset, I will, I'm willing to spend money every month to protect that asset. Well, what until this moment, we may not have connected the dots. And I'm telling you that your single greatest financial asset is your personal borrower profile. Single greatest asset. Somebody tells me, hey, Merrill, I got a million dollars and I don't need to leverage anything because I got a million dollars. And I'm like, awesome, congratulations. But what if that million dollars could create three to $5 million worth of credit lines? Would you rather work with a million dollars or three to $5 million in building your empire? Because that's how money works. You put money into one of five accounts and you show the right traffic patterns, you build the right relationships with $200,000 each, and you can grow those credit lines over and over and over again. With, and ultimately, they're not secured because you built a relationship with the lender that proves you know how to use their money, and they will give you more and more increases in those credit lines. You follow me? So I'm not interested in how much cash you have. I'm interested in how you can leverage that cash. Now, some people say, no, a million dollars is all the money I need to do all the real estate or all the, the Amazon store. All, that's everything that I need. I'm like, great, then Godspeed, do your thing. Because I'm not, right now, I got not, not much to help you with. But if you are the one who says, I got a million in cash, but I want 3 million in credit lines, then of course, I'm going to show you how, right? That I can help you with. So, so back to our assets, the million dollars is not the asset. It, it's the financial reputation to be able to leverage that million dollars into three, four, five, or more. Your financial reputation is worth more than the million dollars is. Everybody following me here. It's worth more than your reputation. Financial reputation is worth more than the million dollars. So if that's the case, what are you willing to do to protect that asset? Are you willing to spend money to protect the asset? That is the, that is the million dollar question because the way we protect our borrower profile and our financial reputation is by paying interest. Because when you pay interest on a vehicle, when you, on, on a vehicle loan, when you pay interest on a on a, your home loan, you're telling the banks, please measure my borrower behavior because I want to partner with you and I want to, I want us to do more deals together. That's what you're in effect saying to the bank. And then on your business, on the business side, you can create uh, on the business side, you can create, um, you can hold balances and pay interest, which puts more money into the bank's coffers, which makes you a more valuable client. Am I making sense here? It's a, you're a more valuable banking partner, right? A more valuable borrower. So interest comes, it, it, I have two messages about interest. One, interest is our investment in the partnership with a lender, a long-term partnership, a very, very profitable partnership with lenders two, three, five, seven, 10 of them. The other thing, which is more paying interest is it is the, is the gift you give for them believing in you. Let's get away from automatic underwriting guidelines and all the tech and FICO, the FICO 40 borrower behaviors and all the things that you're doing right to receive money. Paying interest is the gift you give for that lender believing in you. And if you come from that abundant space, from that generosity space, from that 
we're in this together and you deserve to make some money out of the deals that I'm doing too, you're going to have a wildly successful entrepreneurial practice or, or business because you're investing in that relationship, but your, your head space, your mind space is literally saying, thank you. Here is 6%, 5% on a credit line, 12 to 14% on a credit card, 5%, 6% on a business loan. I'm paying you that money gratefully and graciously. That's it, guys. Generously pay the interest for the money we're making or the tool that they've given us for believing in us. They give us a tool that we can make our dreams come true with. That is the best thing that you can do. So bottom line, guys, our take-home message, there is no such thing as good debt and bad debt. There is, There are people who want to leverage money and want strategic opportunities to do so. And then bad debt is only what keeps a lender from lending to you your consumer cards, your high personal balances. That's all bad debt if we're to frame it that way. But there's fundable debt and then there's unfundable debt. So I want to get out of the good and bad and go to the fundable, unfundable as I always like to do. But you guys think of how you can give back to your lenders, how you can partner with them because they, they have believed in you. You've proven up. You've got great stats. If we're using the NBA draft, right? The, a metaphor that I always use. If you've got great stats, they want to recruit you and they want to give you the ball. And if you know how to dunk that basketball, every time they give you that ball, then they're going to put you on, they're going to put you on the court over and over and over again. That is the same as any credit line, business loan, or otherwise. This is Merrill Chandler, your host of the Get Fundable podcast and your guide to the Get Fundable universe. And my job, my mission in life is to help make getting funding for you more easy. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Get Fundable podcast. Please leave comments because Meryl would love to read about your aha moments from this episode. And be sure to visit GetFundable.com to read our blog, get important links, join our community, and much, much more, like ordering Meryl's tell-all book that is changing the world, the new F word. And you got to tell your friends about this podcast because we want them to get fundable too.